Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you for the start of a brand new Let's Play, and as you may have noticed, this is not my PlayStation 3. Now I decided that I wanted to add to my video gaming console collection, so last week I got me a Wii. And so obviously I needed some, obviously some important accessories to ensure that I could be able to record on my Wii. And so far, I have invested very heavily on um, classic games from the Virtual Console that I can use to be able to play as Let's Plays in the future. And some of these games are games that I've played before, and some of them are blind Let's as well. Some of them I've never played before. They include, but are not limited to in the future. Um, I've got Super Mario World, which is what, what I'm going to be starting. I have Ninja Gaiden, which I only just played today, only just started playing today, and I'm really enjoying it. I have three Legend of Zelda games here, as well as, I believe this is also, yeah, four Legend of Zelda games on this page, and a fifth over here. I also have myself Final Fantasy 3 slash 6, and Star Fox 64. And I was shocked to see that Donkey Kong Country is not available on the Wii Virtual Console. That was really surprising to me, and I have to say I'm very disappointed about that. And also Diddy Kong Racing is also not on here either. So that's also disappointing because I wanted to do a Let's Play of that. So, this is basically just a sample of games you can expect to see me do as Let's Plays in the future. Some of them will be blind, some of them won't be blind, but we'll see how things go. So... Without further ado, let's get to the game that I am going to be doing a Let's Play right now, which is Super Mario World. Alright, we do indeed have a classic controller. Oh. This is from my... That's from my test some work from earlier. So, we're resetting the software. Yeah, I did a test video earlier to see if everything would work properly, and it has. And so we can indeed start doing a Let's Play of Super Mario World. And one of the big reasons why I'm playing this game is the fact that there are surprisingly very few people that have done Let's Plays of Super Mario World. I mean, I've looked through the YouTube archives, and thus far I've only found six people who have played Super Mario World, this this game, Super Mario World. Everything else is what's known as a ROM hack. And ROM hack, for those who are not familiar, is a modified version of a classic game that is made to be much more, more difficult than the original version of the game. It's basically like... Anyone who's familiar with golf in the last 10 years and who watches the major championships will know that one of the more popular golf courses seen in recent years is a golf course known as the Bethpage Black Golf Course down on Long Island. And it's, the, it's most well known for its disclaimer sign on the first tee. And it kind of reads like this. Warning. The Black Course is an extremely difficult course which we recommend only for highly skilled golfers. And you could basically take that sign and use it in the same way for a ROM hack and it would probably look something like this. Warning, the ROM hack is an extremely difficult game which we recommend only for highly skilled players. So yeah, that's basically how a ROM hack works and there are lots of people who have done ROM hacks of Super Mario World on YouTube. In fact, I would go so far as to say that Super Mario World is the most ROM hacked game ever. In fact, I would actually challenge the people at the Guinness Book of World Records to see if this claim is indeed true, if this is indeed the most ROM hacked video game of all time. And some of my most favorite video gamers on YouTube have done ROM hacks of Super Mario World, including um, my all time favorite, Pink Kitty Rose, has played and finished at least two. And I think Proton John has probably done about half a dozen. And so yeah, everyone seems to want to play Super Mario World ROM hacks, but not the original game. So tonight I'm going to buck the trend, as it were, and I'm going to get a game started here. We're going to erase my test file. And then with that in mind, we can now begin our journey. 
Welcome! This is Dinosaur Land. In this strange land we find that Princess Toadstool, known these days as Princess Peach, is missing again. Looks like Bowser is at it again. Because, let's face it, who else is going to try and kidnap Princess Peach? It's not going to be Ganondorf, it's not going to be the Dark Queen, it's not going to be like, um, the Wakio from Ninja Gaiden, it's, it's not going to be Andross, it's not going to be any of those people. So, it might as well be Bowser. So, with that in mind, let's get on to the world map. And we get to not start actually at World 1 or World 1 1 or World 1 2. We actually start here in what's known as Yoshi's house. Basically, this place is abandoned except for a few chirping birds, and we have this little box that we can hit, and it gives us a message. Hello, sorry I'm not home, but I've gone to ca rescue my friends who were captured by Yowzer. By <laughs> by Yowzer. <laughs> Captured by Bowser, signed Yoshi. <laughs> oh wow, what what a wonderful start, and we haven't even started the game yet. <laughs> now let, let's go over here to World One One and get this journey underway. Oh wow, slides and you're up. That's what I was looking to do, and so gonna try and get a good start here. Get myself the old school mushroom, which turns little Mario into Super Mario. And yeah, gotta admit that that was quite hilarious. Yowzer! <laughs> oh man, I I just reminded myself of a um cartoon that Disney made in the early 2000s that I thought was really hilarious, and it reminded me of a character who was like this radio DJ whose catch line was. Hey, Yowza! And so, yeah, that, how's that for a moment for you? So I just passed through the halfway mark, and I should also mention that you also want to collect these, those big giant coins with Yoshi's face on them. They're known as dragon coins, and if you get collect like, all five of them in a stage, you get a one up. Not unlike this one up that we're about to chase down and hopefully capture, which we did. I'm gonna get you out of the way so that you're not a problem. Then, you get access to a fire flower! Alright. Now, lo lots of dinosaurs, I could beat them up if I want to. Of course, if you use a fireball, you can turn them into coins. Yeah, you can put much... The fireballs turn any monster into coins, unless it's a really giant one. It can also be used to subdue really annoying enemies, like the Charging Chuck here. Just sling a few fireballs his way, and... He should go down, just like that. And then at the end of each stage, it, at the end of each normal stage, if you try and... If you can break that uh, little tape that goes up and down, you'll get a number, set amount number of stars depending on how high you were able to break the tape at, up to a maximum of 50 for breaking the tape at the most highest point possible. So by defeating Yoshi's Island 1, we get access to the Yellow Switch Palace. There are four of these Switch Palaces, and they are used to be able to... ...use for the purposes of not only giving you power-ups, but they also give you the opportunity to create platforms, as you'll get to see during the course of the journey. So, we just step on the pa pa on the Switch p there. And the P-Switch was first shown off in Super Mario Bros. 3, and it was continued here. Um, there hasn't been any use of it since, at least not to my knowledge, it hasn't been used since Super Mario World, but I could be wrong. If there's anyone out there who knows, please let me know. So here goes Mario, spreading his arms out, and landing on the Switch Palace, on the little big Switch there, and hovering in midair, letting us know that we have now activated the Switch Palace, and we have now got yellow blocks that will now spread throughout the remainder of the course of the game. And we will save there, thank you. So back down the mountain we go. And so now we're going to go down the opposite side. And into Yoshi's Island 2. Alright, here we go. Now it's time for a little trickery. Let go of the shell and boom, one up. Yeah, gotta make sure you do that right also. It could be a pro you won't be able to get it. So now, what we want to get in here is... The creature known as Yoshi. Hooray! Thank you for rescuing me! My name is Yoshi! On my way to rescue my friends, Bowser trapped me in that egg! 
Yeah, this will be a common theme whenever you want to get Yoshi. He's always going to get be trapped in an egg of some sort. And one of the most things I should point out about Yoshi is not only can he eat fruit, but he can pretty much eat anything that comes his way, except for really giant monsters. And it can be easy to have him along just clear the path, some paths for you. You can also knock some sense into some bad guys that can be problematic. Do, do not follow the example I just demonstrated. Alright, fine. We'll just move on. And there should be another block. And whenever you get... If you have Yoshi and you get to another spot in the next section where you are, and you still have Yoshi, you can actually get a... 1-up instead of a Yoshi. And then you press the A button to dismount from Yoshi. You can go back to him. He won't be too far away unless you wander so far that he doesn't ever come back. So yeah, just keep eating your fruit. Put yourself in a spot where... You can pretty much dictate the pace, like I did just there. And if you eat enough fruit, you'll get another mushroom. A regular mushroom, not like the... Um, awesome mushrooms that, that give you 1-ups. Oh! <laughs> not gonna be doing anything too greedy. So, yeah, come on, you. Yeah, that is the Charging Chuck, the most annoying enemy of this game. He is known as a real trickster, and he is going to take away Yoshi from me, and that sucks. So fine, take- I'm gonna leave you alone, Charging Chuck, because you took Yoshi away from me. So that's what happens when you break the tape and complete a stage. In this instance, I was able to get 28 stars, and... If you keep collecting them, once you get to 100, you'll get the opportunity to play a bonus game where you'll get a chance to gain more 1-ups. So let's be continuing on now. Now, don't worry, there'll be plenty more opportunities to get Yoshi again. So, don't you fret out there, people. We'll see him again. So I just want to do a little momentum thing like that. See? I told you we'd see Yoshi again. And, he even can shoot fireballs if you eat the right Koopa shell. Depending on what Koopa shell you are eating when you're using Yoshi, he can either have a, fire, a fireball spread shot like that. He can also um, grow wings if you have him eat a, Yoshi, a Koopa with a blue shell. Um, he doesn't do anything with the green shell, you can basically use it as a projectile. And also, in addition to that, you if you eat a yellow shell while you're using Yoshi, he creates a like, little earthquake that'll um, cause any enemy standing next to him to get killed off. So just use momentum here in your favor. And be careful not to fall. Alright, so... Let's keep on moving. Now, I have no idea what those star blocks are supposed to do, quite honestly. But, I'm more worried about getting a good score. Alright, 29, nice. 29, I will take that for sure. Slowly but surely, we're making our way to the end of Yoshi's Island, the first world of this game. And now it's time for the first water level. Yeah, we got a lot of cheat cheeps who are gonna try and be cheap and try and separate me from Yoshi, but hopefully that will not happen. I know for a fact that there is a pipe we can go down here. And this is basically an opportunity for Yoshi to eat up on a really huge cactus buffet. Yeah, basically all throughout this section is just nothing but cacti. Oh, point block, point block. Yeah, I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of these if you play old school Super Mario games where the more you hit it, the more coins you get within a set period of time. So yeah, such such blocks do exist. Okay. Oh, nah, I didn't mean to do that. What I? Let's see if I can... I'm gonna try an experiment. Haha, <laughs> it worked! Yeah, what I want to do is hit the switch, and get Yoshi, and then get this star, 
The, invent the old school star man, the invincibility star. Let's see. Yeah, because if you can kill enough enemies in time, you get one ups. Oh, that worked out better than I could have hoped for, and I got another one. Well, I didn't realize the invincibility lasted that long. But hey, I'll take it. Now uh, just wait for the tape to go up. And score 23. Alright, so we're getting close to the 100 bonus star target. Off now to Yoshi's Island number 4. Alright, so this is... No, we just came from Yoshi's Island 4. What am I talking about? Yeah, so this is the boss area. Iggy's Castle. Belonging to Iggy Koopa. One of Bowser's seven children. And we can't take Yoshi in here. We've got to fly solo in this place. Wish me luck, Yoshi. And this place gives you a really good opportunity to stack up on... Or stock up on one-ups. Because... Since your feet are not touching the ground, it gives you the opportunity, if you can keep it going, to chain a bunch of little touches on the Koopas. And every time you touch one, a Koopa with your feet, not with your head, because that would be stupid, you'll accumulate more points, and eventually you'll score one-ups. So in the next... Ow! The next... Oh, I almost got frozen there. The next Koopa that I hit will give me a 1-up. So all I have to do is wait for it to come back to me. Boom, 1-up. And then I can hit this door with Y, hit that panel with Y, swing around, hit him and score another 1-up. And then come back on the other side. And then another 1-up. And yeah, let's just keep doing this. 1-up, 1-up. Oh, sorry. Gotta cut you off. One up. One up. And unfortunately, that's where the chain ends. But we do get a halfway marker. Now to a part that is, by first glance, intimidating, but isn't really. There are a set of these four pillars that you basically just have to avoid as you go through this little section that runs on its own. I'll take a replacement fire flower. And then this next one, you can not do that. I did not hit the jump button in time, and that was embarrassing. So, if you ever run into a situation like that, you can press select, and you'll get the little power-up that you had stored away if you had more than one. So, let's try this again. Yeah, that, that was bad. Th that w that was worse than bad. Ugh. I, I, I looked really ugly there. Ah, uh, but that's what happens when the jump button fails you. I'm gonna play it safe this time. Now let's jump over. And get our fill of Veggie Koopa. Now you can either knock him off by either jumping on him, or by shooting fireballs his direction. However you go at it is up to you, but just don't do that. Oh, oh wrong way, wrong way, oh! Come on. I want to beat you the cool way. Ugh. Tilt over, tilt over. Fine. Get lost. Yeah, someone show me that trick. Uh, by trying to use the fireballs, but I couldn't make it work. It, it was my first time trying, so obviously I need to practice on that. So every time we clear a castle, we save one of the Yoshi eggs there, and it thanks Mario, even though it has no idea what Mario looks like, and has no idea if Mario was a good guy or a bad guy. So, yeah, this egg is putting a lot of blind faith in Mario. <laughs> Nonetheless, Mario has defeated the demented Iggy Koopa in Castle Number 1 and rescued Yoshi's friend who is still trapped in an egg. Together, they now travel to Donut Land. Mmm... Donut Land. <sighs> yeah, I had to. If, if you're a Simpsons fan, you've gotta do it. Y you, you just got to. 
So, we breezed through the first world, but it won't be that easy to do the remaining ones, I can assure you that. So, I'm going to take me a time out here to, um, put all the filming together, and when I see you again, we will continue on with the next episode, so don't go away!